This is Morning Prayers at St. Peter's, Ipswich, brought to you online, a place where we study God's Word together and where we join our hearts and our voices before the throne of God, praying for the needs of our world, our church and ourselves. Welcome this morning. Good morning and welcome to morning prayer from St. Peter's Church, Ipsley in Redditch on this Monday, the 30th of September. My name is Linda Nicholas and I'm part of the ministry team at St. Peter's. And it's a pleasure that you are here today to share worship. And I just love sharing worship with you all. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your faith, faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom. Blessed are you, sovereign God, ruler and judge of all. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of this age that is passing away, May the light of your presence, which the saints enjoy, surround our steps as we journey on. May we reflect your glory this day, and so be made ready to see your face in the heavenly city where night shall be no more. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. A song of trust in God. As the deer longs for the water brooks, so longs my soul for you, O God. My soul is a thirst for God, even for the living God. When shall I come before the presence of God? My tears have been my bread day and night. When all day long they say to me, where is now your gold? Now, when I think on these things, I pour out my soul. How I went with the multitude and led the procession to the house of God. With the voices of praise and thanksgiving among those who kept holy day. Why are you so full of heaviness, O oh, my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? O oh, put your trust in God, for I will yet give him thanks, who is the help of my countenance and my God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And those were words from Psalm 42, 1-7. to The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O oh God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Well, today in the Church of England calendar, we remember Jerome, translator of the scriptures, teacher of faith, 420, Eusebius, Hieronymus, Sophonius, known as Jerome, was probably the greatest Christian scholar in the world by his mid-30s, perhaps the greatest figure in the history of Bible translation. He spent three decades creating a Latin version that would be the standard for more than a millennium. A wealthy student of Jerome's founded a monastery in Bethlehem. 
for him to administer. And it was here that he finished his greatest contribution, translating the Bible into everyday Latin, later to be called the Vulgate, meaning common. For Jerome, his appreciation of the word of God, he carried for the rest of his life. And one of his sayings, make knowledge of the scripture your love. Live with them, meditate on them, make them the sole object of your knowledge and inquiries. And so we remember Jerome today. Well, the appointed psalm of each day is Psalm 34. And it is a psalm of David when he feigned madness before Amlimelech, so that he drove him out and he went away. And this is Psalm 34. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is gracious. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you his holy ones. For those who fear him have no want. The young lions suffer want and hunger. But those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, O oh children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Which of you desires life and covets many days to enjoy good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against evildoers to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord rescues them from them all. He keeps all their bones, not one of them will be broken. Evil brings death to the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is gracious. Let us pray. Send your holy angels to watch over us, O oh God, that on our lips will be found your truth and in our hearts your love, so we may ever taste your goodness in the land of the living, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
the second reading today is Acts 26, 1 to 23. That's Acts 26, 1 to 23. Agrippa said to Paul, you have permission to speak for yourself. Then Paul stretched out his hand and began to defend himself. I consider myself fortunate that it is before you, King Agrippa. I am to make my defence today against all the accusations of the Jews, because you are especially familiar with all the customs and controversies of the Jews. Therefore, I beg of you to listen to me patiently. All the Jews know my way of life from my youth, a life spent from the beginning among my own people and in Jerusalem. They have known for a long time, if they are willing to testify, that I have belonged to the strictest sect of our religion and lived as a Pharisee. And now I stand here on trial on account of my hope in the promise made by God to our ancestors, a promise that our 12 tribes hope to attain as they earnestly worship day and night. It is for this hope, Your Excellency, that I am accused by Jews. Why is it thought incredible by any of you that God raises the dead? Indeed, I myself was convinced that I ought to do many things against the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And that is what I did in Jerusalem with authority received from the chief priests. I not only locked up many of the saints in prison, but I cast my vote against them when they were becoming condemned to death. By punishing them, often in all the synagogues, I tried to force them to blaspheme. And since I was so furiously enraged at them, I pursued them even to foreign cities. With this in mind, I was travelling to Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priests. When at midday along the road, Your Excellency, I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun shining around me and my companions. When we had all fallen to the ground, I heard a voice saying to me in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It hurts you to kick against the goads. I asked, Who are you, Lord? The Lord answered, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to appoint you to serve and testify to the things in which you have seen me and to those in which I will appear to you. I will rescue you from your people and from the Gentiles to whom I am sending you to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. After that, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but declared first to those in Damascus, then in Jerusalem, and throughout the countryside of Judea, and also to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do deeds consistent with repentance. For this reason, the Jews seized me in the temple and tried to kill me. To this day, 
I have that has help from God. And so I stand here testifying to both small and great, saying nothing but what the prophets and Moses said would take place, that the Messiah must suffer and that by being the first to rise from the dead, he would proclaim light both to our people and to the Gentiles. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, the Sanhedrin continues to cause problems for Saul. They want to kill him because he preaches that Jesus rose from the dead. As a bit of a background, two years before, they tried to have him assassinated. When their plans were foiled by Paul's nephew, they tried to convince Governor Felix to execute him. Through the char though the charges were spurious and unprovable, Felix kept Paul in custody as a political favour to the Sanhedrin. Two years later, when Festus replaced Felix, the Sanhedrin tried again. Like Felix, Festus wanted to accommodate the Jewish leaders but he couldn't summarily convict Paul because his Roman citizenship protected him. Festus tried to convince Paul to meet him halfway and Paul responded by appealing his case to Caesar. Festus must send Paul to Rome, but he has no charges. So he's invited King Agrippa II, the king's sister, stroke lover Bernice and the military and the civil leaders of Caesarea to hear Paul's story and to help determine what, if any, crime Paul has committed. After acknowledging that Agrippa will understand the cultural and religious nuances of his story, Paul describes his life before he started following Jesus. He was trained as a Pharisee and absorbed their beliefs. That included subscribing truths of the resurrection of the dead. He also embodied a great respect for the Mosaic law. He was so devout in his traditional beliefs that he actively hunted and arrested Christians, even voted that those who did not recant should be put to death. He was on such a mission when he travelled to Damascus in Syria. And this is Paul's account of his conversion. On Paul's way to Damascus, Jesus appeared in a bright light. Jesus not only claimed Paul, but he also commissioned him to spread the news of his resurrection to Jews and Gentiles and to bring them to understanding so that they would turn from darkness to light. He released, be released from Satan's power, receive forgiveness of sins and have a place among those sanctified by faith. Paul gives a short uh, account of his ministry and this reflects the pattern of Jesus' mandate in Acts 1.8. He then explains why he's in custody, including the attack by the Jews. In short, Paul asserts he was arrested for believing in the prophet and in Moses. We come to a time of prayer. Let's pray. Holy God, your law is perfect and your statutes are trustworthy. And so we pray to you, knowing that you will hear our prayers 
and answer them in your way. We pray for all people who seek to follow your way in their lives. Let your church speak your word of truth with confidence and in unity so that those who are searching and listening will be able to see and hear clearly your message of love and peace. Today in the Church of England calendar, we pray for the Bowbrook Group. We pray for the eight churches of the Bowbrook Group, Hanbury, Stock and Bradley Green, Himbleton, Hudlington, Crowell, Bredicott, Tipperton and Oddingly. Renewing their vision as they emerge from a vacancy. Give thanks for the ministries of Toby Thorns and Ted Jackson. And we pray for their clergy, Richard Sandland, Sue Pollard, and readers, John Spencer, Sue Bussey, Richard Barrett, Yuki Johnson, and Bill Sumner. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the past and of the future, we bring to you in prayer those people and places on our hearts today. We remember the parts of the world where people are being killed, oppressed and displaced. We pray especially for the people of Ukraine, Russia, Israel, Gaza, Sudan. May those in power leave behind violence and follow your call to peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for one another, for our church families, our communities and our loved ones. For those who feel overwhelmed by the challenges of each day. For those adapting to new ways of living. We pray for those who are ill, remembering those for whom we pray. We pray for those mentioned in our weekly newsletter, The Couch. We pray for those known to us. We pray for those with no one to pray for them. And we pray for those who are close to death and for all those who are grieving. Surround all those who need your help with your comforting love today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray the collect on this day that we remember Jerome. Let us pray. O God, who has enlightened thy church by the teaching of thy servant Jerome, enrich it evermore, we beseech thee, with thy heavenly grace and raise up faithful witnesses who by their life and doctrine may set forth to all men the truth of thy salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Uniting our prayers with the whole company of heaven as our Saviour taught us so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who has opened the kingdom of heaven, Bring us to reign with him in glory. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you for joining with me this morning. And that I hope that you may be able to join with me tomorrow when the readings will be Psalm 87 and Acts 26, 24 to the end of the chapter. That's Psalm 87 and Acts 26, 24 to the end of the chapter. So I hope to see you soon. Bye for now.